Okay, welcome everybody. So in this video, we are gonna take a look at how we can apply Markov chains to model the results of an election. So let's imagine now in this model, we have three different states. And that is uh, somebody votes Democrat, somebody votes Republican, or a voter uh, votes for an independent candidate or somebody other than a Democrat or a Republican candidate. So let's imagine here that if a person voted for a Democratic candidate in this election, there's a 70% chance they are going to vote for a Democratic candidate in the next election. There's a 20% chance they change and vote for a Republican candidate. And there's a 10% chance that they change their vote for another candidate that is not Democrat or Republican. And similarly, this node over here in this graph is telling us that if a voter votes for a Republican in this election, they have an 80% chance of voting for a Republican candidate again, a 10% chance of voting for a Democratic candidate, and a 10% chance of voting for uh, somebody, a candidate who is neither Democrat or Republican. And then lastly, we have this other node. And in this node, we can see that if somebody votes for a candidate that is not a Democrat or a Republican in the current election, there's a 30% chance they vote for a Democrat in the next election. There's a 30% chance they vote for a Republican in the next election. And there's a 40% chance that they vote for a candidate who is neither Democrat or Republican again in the next election. So let's imagine that we collect our election results from this current election and based on the voting patterns that we have in this graph and the current results of the election, let's try and make some predictions about what is going to happen in the next election cycle and what is going to happen in two election cycles. So step one, the first thing that we want to do is set up the transition matrix to model this system. Find this matrix P. So that I've set up over here. So I've called Democratic vote outcome one, that a person votes for a Republican outcome two and other three. So for example, this entry here in the one one column is telling us what is the probability that someone goes from Democrat back to Democrat. The entry in uh, the second row first column is saying what is the probability someone goes from event one to event two. So in this case, from a Democratic vote to a Republican vote, and that's the point two. So we can fill in the rest of the transition matrix using the probabilities provided in this graph on the left. So the first column is 0 0.7, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. That adds up to one. This is what we call a probability vector because the entries add up to one. The second column is 0 0.1, 0 0.8, 0 0.1. And the last column is 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. And we would like to know, well, what is the predicted outcome in the next election cycle? We don't have enough information to set up a Markov chain just yet. We need to know what the initial state of the system is. So let's imagine that we know initially, right, this current election cycle, Democrats got 50% of the votes, Republicans got 45% of the votes, and other candidates got 5% of the votes. So now based on this initial state and this transition vector, we should be able to come up with a prediction for the results one election from now, so that we would call x1. And so taking the product of this matrix and this vector, you can verify that we get a, a output vector for x1, which is 0 0.41, 0 0.475, 0 0.115. So here we can see that Democrats are going to win 41% of the votes, Republicans are going to win 47.5% of the votes, and other candidates are predicted to win 11.5% of the vote. So uh, the Democrats won the first election. In this election, uh, the prediction is that Republicans would win this election. And let's see what happens 
um, as we go one more election cycle. So if we want to predict what are going to be the results two election cycles from now, we repeat this process, this iterative process, where now we take x1 and we multiply x1 by the same transition matrix. This is, has uh, the same conditions to figure out what x2 is going to be. And now we can see that the Republicans are picking up even more votes. So in this case, um, the Re Democratic candidate would win 36.9% of the vote. The Republican candidate wins 49.65% of the vote. And other candidates are also picking up a larger percentage of the vote. They are now earning 13.45% of the vote. Um, these are all predictions based on the probabilities that were given to us initially. And so hopefully this gives you some sense about what information you need to set up a Markov chain and how we can construct a transition matrix for Markov chains and how we can use those transition matrices and an initial state vector to make predictions about the system um, for a certain number of time steps out in the future.